Hi, I'm Ray, and this is The Kitchen. This week, we're talking about baking powder versus baking soda. What's the difference? I don't know. I didn't know, and then I looked it up so that I could tell you guys. So I did some research, and let me tell you what I found out. So before I do tell you what I found out, I just wanted to talk about what I've been making lately. So in the past week, I filmed for this coming Saturday's YouTube video. So the... June 25th, 2022, I have my favorite fruit salad. It's not just your basic fruit salad, it's special. At least to me. And then on Saturday, I wanted to make some cookies, like either some sugar cookies or some chocolate chip cookies, but I didn't wanna make cookies because I didn't wanna to have to go through batches of cookies. And so I just decided to make them in bar form. So I made sugar cookies in bar form and 10 out of 10 would recommend if you don't want to have to go through the rigmarole of batches of cookie dough on sheets and in and out of the oven, just, I found a recipe and I just made the dough, put it in the pan, baked it, let it cool, cut it, good to go. Totally recommend. And then yesterday I was doing some food prep for this week and I decided to make fajitas, but I borrowed an idea that my mom shared with me. Hi mom, thanks for the idea. Um, baking your fajitas. So you cut up all of your veg and your chicken or your steak if you're using it. And then um, a little bit of oil and then your fajita seasoning. And then you just pop it on a sheet in the oven. And mine was, <clears throat> it had me baking I just did veggie. So I just did a bunch of bell peppers and a Vidalia onion, some olive oil, and I tossed it with a packet of fajita seasoning. And then I put it on a foiled baking sheet and then I popped it in a 400 degree, what? A 400 degree oven for 25 minutes I ended up doing. They said 20 to 25 and, and I did 25 just so that I could get a little bit of brown on the veggies and so that was really good. So then I um, I took some for lunch today and I just had made some rice. So I put a bunch of my veggies over a bunch of rice and then I sprinkled on some shredded cheddar cheese and I could have put sour cream on. I had sour cream, but I didn't take any. So that would have been good and some salsa, but I like making things that you can just pop in the oven. You just do the prep, you pop it in the oven, and you, when you take it out, it's done. Awesome. And then I made another batch of cilantro dressing, and I have the video tutorial on how I make that on my YouTube channel, so go check that out if you like cilantro. It's a delicious, creamy dressing. Um, it's gluten-free if you're gluten intolerant or you have celiac disease because it's made with tahini and I didn't realize this until I was talking to someone who was recently diagnosed with celiac disease that a lot of like salad dressings have wheat in them. And I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, I have a, do you like cilantro? Like I have a recipe that you could try out if you, if you're looking for it. So I really like the cilantro dressing recipe that I found and that I have a tutorial on how to make. It's really good. This might sound weird just putting over like some rice. So you make like cilantro rice or cilantro pasta. Very simple, but very delicious. And then it's really pretty because it's a really bright green color. Go check it out. Actually, I'll leave a link down below for you guys in the show notes, or if you're listening or watching on YouTube, I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys. But <clears throat> I think that's all I've made this week. Just thought I'd share if you would like to share with me what you've been making or baking or cooking I would love to hear about it you can DM me on the social medias or you can rate and review the show and leave it in your review 
or if you're watching on YouTube, you can just pop me a comment down below. Okay, let us get into baking powder versus baking soda. Now, I didn't know the difference either. I think I told you that in the intro, I didn't know. Now I'm gonna tell you. So some recipes when you're baking call for baking soda, some call for baking powder, and some call for both. I've heard someone else say this, and I've also thought it too, that I feel like baking powder works better, but it might just be because what I'm making works better with one versus the other. Baking powder and baking soda are both leaveners. They give your biscuits, your cakes, your cookies rise. They form little air bubbles in there, and then it makes it so that your baked goods aren't as flat as a tortilla. I know the saying is flat as a pancake, but I don't like flat pancakes, and I don't make flat pancakes. And tortillas are flatter, so. If you wanted to stick with a pancake theme, you could say flatter than a crepe. Because those are in the pancake family. I digress. Baking powder and baking soda help us achieve lighter, fluffier baked goods. So for my information today, I I got some assistance from foodnetwork.com, armandhammer.com, and allrecipes.com. So baking soda is also known as sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda. Baking soda needs an acid in order for it to react and create those tiny little bubbles. And in those tiny little bubbles, it's CO2. CO2 is what the product of that reaction is. But baking soda needs that an acid to react to create bubbles to make your baked good rise. So some acids that you might think of that you'd find in your recipes might be vinegar, lemon juice, or buttermilk. Now, I was reading and they mentioned some that I hadn't thought of as being an acid, such as yogurt, molasses, chocolate, so your cocoa powder, sour cream, and brown sugar. Now, you might be thinking like, brown sugar, that, how is that acidic? Well, brown sugar is made with molasses and if you mention, if if you remember a few seconds ago, I mentioned molasses. So, the more you know. And baking soda reacts fast. So, I feel like I knew this when I was a little, like, earlier in my baking career, but I've forgotten about it. Baking soda acts fast. So, when you're baking with baking soda, you want to get your dough, your batter mixed, get it in its pan and pop it in the oven as quickly as you can, so you get the most rise out of your baking soda. It's called quick acting. And then we have baking powder, which actually contains baking soda. It's a combination of baking soda, some sort of dry acid, and sometimes cornstarch. The dry acid is oftentimes tartaric acid, might be saying that weird, but it's also known as cream of tartar, and that's probably what you're used to hearing it called, cream of tartar. And I didn't look it up to see why cornstarch is, is added sometimes. My theory is that it's an, it acts as an anti-caking agent, so it helps baking your baking powder stay powder and not clump up. So if you remember from baking soda, baking soda needs an acid to react with to create the little CO2 bubbles. Since baking powder has cream of tartar in it or some other dry acid, it only needs moisture in order for a reaction to occur and for those tiny CO2 bubbles to form and to make our batters and our doughs rise. And I didn't know this, but there's single action and double action baking powders. So I just went and got out my baking powder and mine is double acting. And 
The interwebs say the interwebs said that double acting is more common. Um, so I'm gonna maybe I'll take a look next time I go to the store and see if they actually sell single action baking powder in my baking aisle. So the difference between single action and double action or single acting and double acting baking powder is probably what you can assume it means. So single action baking powder reacts right when it comes in contact with the mixture. So if you're using single action baking powder, you want to move quickly, just like with baking soda, to get your batter or your dough mixed, get it in its pan and get it baking so that you get the most out of the rise. Now double acting, as you might think, has two reactions. It has that first reaction when it comes in contact with the moisture of your dough or your batter. And then it has a second reaction when it bakes and it reaches a certain temperature. I don't know what the temperature is, but I'm guessing it's a warmer than room temperature temperature. So then why do some recipes call for both baking powder and baking soda? It's the baking soda's fault. Do you remember how baking soda needs an acid to react with? to create the little CO2, little CO2 bubbles to give it rise. I think about it as the baking soda using up or eating the acid that is in your batter. So whatever it might be, the lemon juice, the vinegar, the yogurt. When the baking soda uses up the acid, it is also breaking it down. And in breaking down the acid, it's breaking down its flavor too. One recipe that we might all be familiar with or you've probably heard of them if you've ever been to a restaurant for breakfast is buttermilk pancakes. Buttermilk has like a bit of a tangy flavor to it. So if we were to use just baking soda in making our buttermilk pancake batter, we would lose some if not all of the tang from the buttermilk. And therefore we would be losing some if not all of that tangy flavor that gives buttermilk pancakes their unique flavor. So by using both baking soda and baking powder, the baking soda can eat up the cream of tartar to create its CO2 bubbles to give us our rise and leave the buttermilk alone. Now, how does the baking soda know to eat the cream of tartar versus the buttermilk? The acid in the cream of tartar versus the acid in the buttermilk? I really have no idea. That's a great question. Somehow it works. We managed to get the tanginess of buttermilk from in our buttermilk pancakes when we use both. So it knows. So did you know that you can actually make your own baking powder? If you did and you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button so that I know you know. So one teaspoon of baking powder is equal to one quarter teaspoon of baking soda and one half teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now, if you were to make a big batch of this and use it as you would when a recipe calls for a teaspoon of baking powder, you would be using too much if you were to just take a whole teaspoon of what you just made. So this is where our cornstarch comes into play add a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch and that gives you a whole teaspoon. So one teaspoon of baking powder equals a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch and a half teaspoon of cream of tartar. So if you're going to make a big batch of it, that would be one part baking soda, one part cornstarch, and two parts cream of tartar. Now, if you don't have cream of tartar, the Arm & Hammer website gave conversions. Um, you can use white vinegar or lemon juice and create a baking powder substitute. So I'll leave a link to the article I used to get to work on my notes. I'll leave that down in the show notes or down in the description for you guys to check out. Uh, it might be handy to write down in a pinch if you run out of baking powder, but you have baking soda, you have some lemon juice or some vinegar, or 
you happen to have cream of tartar. I feel like that's such a rare thing to have. At least it is in my kitchen. And then you can actually test your baking powder in your baking soda to see if it's still fresh. And I've never done this, and I think that's just because I'm regularly using my baking powder and my baking soda, but I know that might not be the case for everyone. So, if you add a teaspoon of your baking powder to a glass of hot water, if it bubbles up, it's still fresh. For baking soda, if you add one teaspoon to some vinegar, some white vinegar, and it bubbles up, it's still fresh. I don't think you need a lot of vinegar. Like if you just have like a little glass bowl and you put some to cover the bottom of it and you put baking soda on top, I think you'll get your reaction if it's fresh. So there you go. Now you know the difference between baking powder and baking soda. And now I know too. I learned and I can share it with you and hopefully I'll remember it. But I thought it was handy that you can make your own baking powder. I wonder if it's cheaper if you were to make your own. I don't know. Do you make your own baking powder? Let me know. Hit that like button. But there you go. Your, your two classic leaveners for baking. Baking powder and baking soda. Now you know, they're both important, they're both different, they're both necessary. And sometimes they can work together and help each other out. That's all I had for you guys today. If there's anything that I got wrong or anything you wanna share with me, if you're watching on YouTube, you can just drop me a comment down below or I will link my social medias down below in the show notes or in the description and you can connect with me there. And if you like today's show, if you're liking the kitchen, I would be grateful if you would rate and review the show wherever you're listening to podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just leave me a comment. I like to hear from you guys and I'll leave you with this. Jesus loves you and out of all of the things that he's created in this universe, all of the wonders of the world, all the beautiful places on this earth and all of the beautiful things that you can see in the galaxy. Have you looked, have you Googled that? Like some of the images that like the Hubble telescope have, has taken or any of the images or the video that we've gotten from the other planets, they're magnificent. Sometimes scary, but magnificent. And they're humongous. All the stars out there, all of the galaxies, we are so small, but we're his favorite creation. And he loved us so much that God sent Jesus to die for all of our sins so that we can spend eternity with him. And it blows my mind that he loves us more than any of his other creations. So if you want to know more, I'm gonna leave a passage of scripture down below in the show notes and the link to where I got it from the Bible. And I hope you go check it out, but I'll leave that up to you. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week. The fridge is just compressing along over there. I could totally hear it on last week's podcast. You guys might not have been able to. Excuse me.